Psalm 73, 24, Thou shalt guide me with thy counsel, and afterward receive me to glory. But God, I can't be guided if I'm reading the Bible. I've got to be hearing the Bible. Faith cometh. My God, so when I read, he says, Humble yourself, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time. Come on! And you hear people say, God's going to humble you. No, he ain't going to humble you. You humble yourself. He's going to stop you from sinning. No, he that keepeth himself. The wicked one toucheth him not. Y'all got this? Yes. See, accurate prayers produces accurate knowledge. If you look at this chapter 1 all the way down to chapter 10, it all dealing with understanding. And the Bible said if you lack these things, you're blind. What, but, but you can understand these things, and sometimes you forget that you were purged from your old sins. I refuse to take upon me my old sins. Even the ones I've committed that were new. <laughs> How many of you have made mistakes since you saved? But the minute you repent, it become old. See, it's like I was dealing with Joyce there. You know, is it true, Joyce? You wanted to slap Charles last week. Well, not really. I wanted not to slap him. I wanted to hit him with a baseball bat, <laughs> which is a little stronger than a slap. No. No, Joyce. No, Joyce. Just say this. Remember that. He's your advocate. Remember, the judge is going by what you say. And if we understood confession, we would guide our mouth. That's why you... The theological, homiletical, hermeneutical, philosophical ministers preach against confession. You don't understand what you're doing. The devil's using your mouth to kill you with. If we would guide our mouth and guard our mouth, listen to this, we would never speak anything with death in it. But death is one of the most prominent vocabulary words of people. I almost died laughing. <laughs> I tell you the truth. It almost killed me. <laughs> Everything has death in it. But the Bible said death and life is in the power of the tongue. So if we guard that confession, and I'm bad about that myself. I got to watch myself. The other day I said, so, you don't say this in front of Kenneth Copeland. I said, I was so mad because I was trying to fix my motorcycle and I keep, every time I put the cover on, it takes a lot of time to put the cover clean. This is at night. I for, always forget to lock the trunk in the back. I got to pull it all off. I said, I'll tell you one thing. I said, you know, I said, my confession has been slipping. I got to need to start, I got I to start talking about get my confession straight. And all of a sudden, I remembered. I forgot to lock that box. I, and I said this, this negative confession is killing me. <laughs> and Kenneth liked the fellow on the floor. He was laughing. He said, yes. I said, God, forgive me what I just said. See, but you can let it slip. And we've let it slip. And that's why you got some of the trouble you got. If you do these things, you shall never fail or you shall never fall. Now, the Bible says in Psalms 37, verse 3, trust in the Lord. That's a big statement. Trust in the Lord. Do you think he meant that? No, he just had an empty blank and he just throwed it in there. <laughs> no, trust in the Lord and do good. Come, not, what comes from trusting in the Lord is goodness. So shalt thou dwell in the land. Verily thou shalt be fed. Notice God's got prosperity on his mind. Why is prosperity preached so much? Against. Because Satan has to pay up. And what happens is, is people take someone that may have went overbalanced or whatever, crazy with some, something, and try to throw the whole wonderful truth away. Like this laughing revival. I know, I'll tell you one thing, I don't like that laughing revival. They're all in the flesh. Well, you know, you probably was in the flesh watching it. <laughs> Don't shout me down. We've all done that. But let me give you a little prime example. I've done it myself. I, you know, we're not God's adults. We are God's children. Amen. Have you ever thought, and I'm not saying this is happening, but have you ever thought, I submitted to you for your thinking. Have you ever thought, I've seen some people fall on the floor in uncontrollable laughter that were people of dignity that did not want to do that. Couldn't help themselves. Have you ever thought that God is doing this? Not, we're not God's adults. We're God's children. You ever thought God's going, diggy, 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 And he might be goosing some of them. Goose, goose, Yeah. How many of y'all ever tickled your children? Hold your hand up, you tickle your children. 
How many of you have goosed your children and they're grown up now? <laughs> My daughter's grown up, but every once in a while I give her a little goose. Woo, daddy. <laughs> Say, where'd you learn that from? Church. <laughs> Church, yeah, it happens. Especially Pentecostal. They've been talking to you. They say, you know, God, God, mm, God's good. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh. It's a little goose. It ain't get, uh, yes. So we're gonna baptize you in a man. Oh, dear. Yes. Oh. Say, what's happening? The Lord going, <laughs> Why can't he do that? Aren't we his, fa- aren't we are his children, father and his family? Just a little goose. If you do these things, go back to that verse 9. But he that lacketh these things is blind and cannot see afar off. 2 Peter 1, 9, and hath forgotten that he was purged from his old sins. Did you hear that person laugh a while ago? Sound like a little hog, huh? <laughs> hey, you people watching my television, why do you that? <laughs> that kind of laugh means they cleaned their sinuses out with that. <laughs> Verse 10, <laughs> even pretty girls do that sometimes. <laughs> now, you can expect an ugly girl doing that, but a pretty girl? Hello, <laughs> fucking... Wherefore the rather brethren, give diligence. Let me tell you something about women. <laughs> Let me tell you something about women. Women worry more about their bodies than men do. And women are worried because, you know, women, they end of this, they end of looking good. One thing a woman hates is the curse of cellulite. Oh, Lord, they hate that cellulite. They don't want that cellulite. If they cross their legs sometimes, they get that little Swiss cheese on their leg. <laughs> You know, it's called cellulite. Kathy's worried about that sometimes. She says, she said, boy, Jesse, I got cellulite. I said, Kathy, that's not cellulite. That hail damage. <laughs> that little hail damage. I told you to get out that storm, man. Don't go walking around with them hails. <laughs> Hit you there. Leave dents in your leg. And other parts of your body. Hail damage. <laughs> that's hail damage. That's all it is. I had, she, I had one person say, yeah, but what? What good is cellulite? I mean, you can put your gum there. (laughs) It's a dent. I don't know. I don't know. I don't care. It doesn't make any difference, does it? Look at them women. Hmm. That's hail damage. But that is. Verse 10, wherefore the rather brethren give diligence to make your calling and election sure. For if you do these things, God, I love that. You shall never fall. Now, I didn't read verse 11, but listen to this. For so an entrance shall be ministered unto you abundantly into the everlasting kingdom of our Lord and Savior, Jesus, his person, and Christ, his message. Kathy, write this down. I'm going to preach a sermon, the difference between Jesus, his person, and Jesus, his message. I just, I, I've got to preach that. Spirit of God just quicken that to my innermost being because most people understand the person of Jesus but not the message of Jesus. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to shock you with this. You see this? This is an epistle. Right? This is not what Peter preached. This is what Peter wrote. Y'all didn't get that. Let me say it again. Look at your Bible. Look at Peter. This is not what he preached. This is what he wrote. What Peter preached was this, how God anointed Jesus Christ of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and power who went about doing good, healing all that were pressed of the devil for the Lord God was with him. The spirit of the Lord God is upon me for he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor, to recover of sight to the blind. See, this is what he wrote. Now you see, how many of you are partners to my ministry? Hold your hand up. Okay, put your hand down. We send you a partner letter, is that correct? We send you a magazine, is that correct? That's not what we preached, that's what we wrote. If I sent to you what I preached, it, it'd be... It'd be, it'd be at least 1,800 pages. See, if I would write down exactly everything I'm saying right now, what I preach, my Lord, I'd, it'd be it'd, it'd this thick. So what we do is send you something I write. Now, what I write is, is connected to what I preach. But see, this is what, he, what Peter wrote. If everything would have been wrote down what Peter preached, the book would be big as this. If everything would have been wrote down that Jesus preached, the books of the world couldn't contain it. 
So he wrote something for us. He condensed it. Oh, you understand? Always remember that. That'll help you greatly. You see what I'm saying? Like when Kathy and them and the editors of my magazine, when they edit one of my sermons, they don't put the word shy and hello and hi, but they want you to hear what, they want you to hear my accent. You know how that cage said, my accent. See? They want you to hear me speaking, but they have to condense because there ain't enough page to do it. He's saying this. If you do these things, you shall never fall. Now, he went through a bunch of things, see? But I mean, if, if he'd have put his life there as an example, the book would be as big as, big as this. But this is enough to get you through. Are you understanding? Yeah. John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. That will get you to heaven. But it ain't enough for you to enjoy the trip. But it's going to get you to heaven. How do you know that? Well, see the people that believe in it. Go look at the denomination that only believe John 3, 16. They're going to heaven, but they ain't enjoying the trip. <laughs> They're not. I tell you what, the Lord put this sickness on us to teach us something. This is the most crazy. I heard one preacher tell me, he said, you know, sickness is not, uh, miracles are gone away. They're not for the day. But it's amazing to me. I said, well, does anybody ever get sick in your church? Well, yeah. I said, well, what do you do? He said, well, we have people pray for them. I said, oh, you have somebody around the clock? Yeah, we put them on the prayer list. For God to but you told me that God sent him sickness to teach him something. And you told me that miracles are not for the day. Why would you put him on a prayer chain? If God sent you to the doctor, to the hospital, to throw in your guts up to teach you something, why is everybody going to pray for you to be healed? You know, I was born at night, but not last night. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying here? Yeah. Huh? That don't make sense, huh? Yeah, sister, so, so God sent this to te teach us something. Uh, put it on a prayer list. But what for? Don't put it on a prayer list. What are you praying against the will of God for? Let the old bird die. <laughs> Do you see how silly that is? But the Bible said diligent, knowledge, temperance, patience, godliness, brotherly, kindness, and love. If you, <laughs> partakers. Escape corruption of the world through lust, all this. This is so simple. Let me just say it like this. I'll condense it. Diligence, dedication, and commitment is the key to total success in your Christian walk. Moral excellence, self-control. You must possess faith, virtue, knowledge, temperance, patience, godly, brotherly kindness, love, perseverance. Now, the reason why that's hard for you to get in your mind, because you, I'm reading it. Let me go back to what I first said. But if you hear it, then it's not like this. Uh, you must possess faith, virtue, knowledge, temperance, patience, God, and brother, kindness, love, and perseverance. Well, one of those words can last a lifetime. But if you hear it, then this comes to your mind. Whoso keepeth his word in him, verily is the love of God perfected. That's 1 John 2, verse 5. Hereby know we, hereby know that we are in him. Now that is, well, turn with me to that. 1 John chapter 2, verse 5, and then we'll close here. 1 John chapter 2, verse 5. But whoso keepeth his word... Whose word? God's word. Didn't Peter say, if you do these things, you shall never fall? 1 John 2, 5. But whoso keepeth his word in him, that's you, verily is the love of God. Now, perfected. The word perfected means matured. Why? Why does God want love matured? Why? Why? Just so you can act nice? No. Because love never faileth. Which brings me back to the tireless message, how not to fail in this life. That's why God wants you to walk in the love of God. He's trying to stop failure. If you do these things, you shall never fail or never fall. 1 John 2, 5. But whoso keepeth his word in him, fell is the love of God matured. Hereby know we that we are in him. Now, what did Paul preach? Well, if, you, if you're a student of the Pauline revelation, we call it in Christ. In the anointing is anointed. No, that's what Paul wrote. What Paul preached was how God anointed Jesus Christ of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and power, who went about doing good, healing all that were oppressed of the devil. He had to get over to the Jews that he was the anointed one. So all his epistles are known as in Christ. Not in the person. In the message. Now, don't think I'm 
putting down the person of Jesus. He's the matchless son of God. But you see, if you don't know what he said, then you can't live. Because what he said is speaking, decreeing, and declaring. That's why I told you, hear the Bible. Instead of just read the Bible. That is so vitally important. I'll tell you what, if you do this, backslide will never be a part of your life. You've escaped all that. But Jesse, you look like you live so good. What is it, but Jesse? Verse 2, grace and peace be multiplied in 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 2. Grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord. Well... I have the knowledge of God and Jesus our Lord. So grace, God's unmerited favor, and peace that pass it all understand is multiplying for me right now. You know, I never get out of revival. <laughs> I don't know how people can just get in the right of life. And do you know the only person I ever hear preach usually is me? Maybe that's the reason why. Huh? Not because you're a great preacher? No. It's because... By understanding the knowledge of God, the, the unmerited favor God's given to me, and the peace that passes all understanding flows in my life. That doesn't mean I don't have trouble. I mean, I'll be honest with you. When hurricanes and different things get around us, I mean, I get concerned. I mean, I, I'm a human being. But what happens if the hurricane blow your house down? Build another one. You ain't going to live in the yard. Your dog might live in the yard. He probably won't live in the yard long neither. You do what you can. You see, a failure is not someone that fell down and made a mistake. It's the one that lived in the mud. See, the prodigal son was a failure because he was starting to enjoy the hog business. Well, ladies and gentlemen, your pig farming days are over when you meet Jesus. You understand? Your pig farming days are over. But you got to understand something. I preached a sermon 15 years ago. Lord, take my problems but don't mess with my pigs. We can have our little hogs. And we dress them up real good. Put little diamond collars on. Walk with them in our church. <laughs> Scoot over. Let my hog in here, will you? Yeah. <laughs> and we call it Babe. There's a little movie out. I hadn't seen it, but I mean, they said it's a real funny little, little hog. Think he's a sheepdog. <laughs> and we carry our little hogs with us. Little hog or what? May God, that's the way it is, Sha. We're not changing. Scoot over. Put that hog in there. When God take these cigarettes from me, that's a little hog. You didn't bless that little thing. You made him a camel now. I wait. When the Lord get ready, get ready. In God's eye, that hog is a ham sandwich. What are you saying? If you do these things, you shall never fail. There's so much, and I'm cutting all this, and, but I'll just say this much. Can that be done in this life? Well, it was done in the old covenant. The Bible said Enoch walked with God. And because he pleased God. Now, how did he please God? He heard what he said. The Bible said the Lord took him. He didn't die. Now, you think, I hope this is not true what I'm about ready to say. But of all the people born on the planet Earth, only one man walked with God enough to the point that God said, I can't live without him. I've got to take him now. What did that man do? He pleased God. Real quickly, so you don't just believe me, turn with me to Hebrews real quick. Chapter 11. And verse 5. Watch this. Now, this is an old covenant man. By faith, Hebrews 11, 5. By faith, that's the most important two words in the verse. By faith, Enoch was translated that he should not see death and was not found. And God always tells you why. Because God had translated him. For before his translation, he had this confession. Y'all missed that. Y'all think a testimony is different from confession. The Bible said we have been delivered by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our what? What does that mean? Confession. Guarding your mouth. Speaking. Look, 
For before his translation, he had this testimony or, quote, this confession. What was this man doing? What made God take him? He was perfected in confession, for he pleased God. He guarded his mouth with great tenacity. He spoke, Joyce, he just said this. I love that. He just said this. And there it is. The difference between amen and there it is. Most people say amen, but there's no there it is. Just that simple. Just say this. In giving, I've had people say, why do you give like that? Because I heard it would be given back to me. So I could be given again. Now, what is wrong with that? Thank you, Lord. Well, we could do that in private. No, we're not going to do that in private. Lord said, you know, I went to your house last night. You got a pretty home. But you don't have a breakfast table and stuff, right? You go, I'm going to buy you that. You go pick what you want. The Lord spoke that to me last night when I walked in that house. I said, well, I'll just tell her. He said, no, don't tell her. I said, well, I'll tell her tomorrow. He said, no, you're not. I'm going to tell you now. He heard your prayer. He seen you give it. And when I walked in that, God quickened me. I looked and went, hmm. He said, tell them you're going to pay for whatever they want there. So, Joyce, shopping day is coming. <laughs> <laughs> So strong. What's that? You picked it out a year and a half ago? Well, bless God. Tell her she got a lot of money. <laughs> now, why did you do that, Brother Jesse? Just say this. Amen. Just say this. Isn't that wonderful? Yes! <laughs> I, I know. Perry must, know, Perry must know something I don't know. He probably thinking, Jesse, it's spending some money right now. <laughs> that's okay. Now, you see, that's the joy of the, because she's been given. Now, the reason for it is they're giving. Charles, well, he's probably in the television. Charles, you don't need to eat on the floor no more. <laughs> Just say this. Just say this. I mean, he quickened me so much last night. I, in fact, I didn't even tell Kathy. I didn't say a word, but I knew it in the spirit. I just knew it somewhere, somewhere. Now, some of you'd say by television, oh, you're just doing that to show off. Come here. <laughs> Come here. I could show off more with my money in my pocket than my money in Joyce's pocket. <laughs> Come on. Now. How can you afford that? <laughs> Just say <laughs> this. <laughs> See, and we give when people say you shouldn't give. You're not going to stop my giving. And how come you, your ministry don't go down in the summertime like a lot of other ministries? Because we gave in the winter. We gave in the spring. We gave in the summer. We gave in the fall. You see, we give every season because every season we got a crop. Just say this. How not to fail. Now, Joyce, ain't no telling what God's going to do for me since I've obeyed. Oh, Lord. Don't get mad at me. It ain't my fault. That's right. That's right. Don't get angry at me. My God, if you see, but just say, Ma, look, I'll tell you what. Look, look, look. Look, guys, do it. Don't get. It ain't my fault. You see, the Lord knew I would obey. I'm not bragging on myself. Actually, the Lord's doing it for them. I'm just a receptacle for a current to flow through. That's it. That's all. That's it. I knew it in my spirit. Usually I talk to Kathy about it. How did God I didn't mention it to you? But when I saw Kathy, Kathy went like this. 
Because she knows, Lord, we're going to get blessed. And you know, we're blessed now. I don't, look at me. I'm, I'm blessed. Do I look broke? I am <laughs> far from broke. Don't get mad at me. I'm not bad. I can't help it. It's just that I believed for my return so I could be a blessing. Now, if I didn't have this, Joyce, I could not be a blessing. So it is more blessed to give. Why? Because you got it. Because you got it. You have it. Now, don't take that arrogantly. That's just simply the truth. So I'm excited. I've obeyed the Lord. I wasn't fighting him last night. I said, okay. I said, I'll tell Kat. He said, yeah, she'll agree. She always has. Then there's times. One time at a church, Kathy did something. She said, the Lord told me to do something. I said, okay. And she did, and I went, Ooh. I had one of them Pentecostal jerks come up. <laughs> and I, oh, Jesus. Hallelujah. It was a major goose, and I want to let you know. <laughs> but, oh, God blessed us beyond our wildest dreams. Thank you, Lord. Okay, I heard the Lord say, <laughs> tell him what you just heard me say. He made a command. Angels, go to New Orleans and bless and cause favor to come upon Jesse Duplantis. Not because of who I am, but because who he is in me. How not to fail in this life. If you do these things, you should never fall. Let's give Jesus a hand clap. Thanks for listening to this powerful message by Jesse Duplantis. Remember to hit like, subscribe, and the notification bell in order to be up to date with all things Jesse Duplantis Ministries. For more information, visit our website at jdm.org. This media is copyrighted by Jesse Duplantis Ministries for the private use of our audience. Any other use of this media or of any pictures or accounts without Jesse Duplantis Ministries' consent is strictly prohibited.